Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Monday, March the 25th, the beginning of Holy Week. Our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. You can find this anywhere. I got mine at Ollie's. And our it is week 13 of the year 2024, and our focus for this week is hope. Our devotion today is entitled, The Unbreakable Tether. Our scripture comes from the book of Lamentations, the Old Testament book, Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 24 through 25 out of the New American Standard Bible, and it reads, The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. That is a comfort. If you're waiting for him, if you're seeking him, he is good to you. All right, let's get into this. For the child of God, hope is a rich inheritance, a priceless, limitless resource that lights the darkest night and kindles the dullest ember. To belong to God is to have hope on speed dial. Amen to that. <laughs> a prayer or scripture away, a ready connection with your sovereign Savior who purchased hope for you on the cross. Sometimes, though, the only way to appreciate what you've been given is to think of what life would be like without it. Think about that. To lose hope, then, is to pull anchor in a storm to be untethered from the very idea that tomorrow might be better than today. Hopeless people give up on relationships because they've gotten stuck in a fight or flight mode. They give up on getting help because how could anything ever be good again? Do you hear the lies of the devil and all that? Do you hear it? As a Christian, though, God tenderly holds you in the palm of his hand. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Though they stumble, they will not fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. That's in Psalm 37, verses 23 through 24, out of the New Living Translation. Nothing can separate you from his love. Romans 8, 38 to 39, and we heard that last week. That was one of our scriptures last week. Nothing can take us out of the love of God, or what is it? Nothing can separate us from God's love nor the hope that you have in Christ. I don't think people realize how important hope is, okay? People who are struggling with depression, they have no hope. That's literally how depression is ushered in. And there are, there are things that happen in our life, loss, um, illness, the different things that occur in the natural. You can't be a denier of natural when you live in the natural world, you can't be a denier of those things, but you have to know that the supernatural God who created you and this earth is able to move on your behalf. And because of that, you have hope. When we leave this earth and all of its trappings, we're going to enter into our eternal life, which is forever. Our life here is a vapor. Okay. Okay. The time we have on this earth in these physical bodies that God created is like that. Eternity is forever. When you have Christ, your eternal home is secure. And the beautiful things that awaits you, your eyes have never seen it, nor your ears have ever heard it, nor can your mind or imagination conjure up what God has in store for those who love him. That is our hope. That is our promise. Even if we're the disease that exists in this realm, in this natural realm, even if a disease were to ravage us and be the end of our physical body and the beginning of our eternal home, we have a hope with him. The problem is, is that a lot of people, because they can't see it, they think it's, it's the product of an imagination. They choose not to believe it for whatever reason. And I find that so sad, you know. This is our only existence, our only help. 
God has paid the price for our sin. And this week specifically, Holy Week, is really going to drive that home for you. It, When you think about it and fully understand what it is he did for you, the sacrifice that he made for you, for your healing, for the restoration of your soul, for the redemption of your soul. He went through all that so that we would have a means by which we could enter heaven. Without that sacrifice, heaven is lost to us. We do not have the hope of heaven if we do not accept the sacrifice Jesus made on our behalf. I remember watching The Passion, the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ, with Jim Caviezel portraying Jesus. I remember when that came out in the theaters, what was it, 2007, 6, 7, something like that. <clears throat> the reality of the brutality that he endured was masterfully recreated on the big screen. And they had to tone it down. I love the way that Mel Gibson panned away during the, the beating of the 39 lashes. And they went through all 39. Um, the way he panned away and went to the crowds, you know, and you even see the person portraying the devil walking amongst the crowds, watching, you know, it was, uh, it, it was a, a break from the brutality of what was occurring. But as believers, we have to know and see, we can't even imagine how they said he was marred so badly. People wouldn't have recognized him as a human being. And then they ripped out his beard by the roots. Can you imagine the pain of that? I mean, the, what he went through, the humiliation, the agony of the beating. But he did it all for us. We have hope in Christ. And I hope this week, especially, that you are especially cognizant of the sacrifices that he made for you. And in light of eternity, whatever you're going through, if you have the hope of Christ because you've received him as your Lord and Savior, whatever it is you're facing now, whatever trial or tribulation you're facing now, in light of eternity, how important is this? Because your soul is secure in heaven if you've received Jesus as your Savior knowing and trusting him that he can come in and rescue you from whatever you're facing. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you have evil people after you who are trying to kill you. Okay. We actually all have that because the devil hates us and that's what he wants to do. Steal, kill, destroy. Okay. Say this is happening. Say something. Christ is your savior. Christ is your salvation. Christ is your helper. Christ, if you are tethered to him, you have hope. Okay, don't let the devil steal that hope through whatever circumstances. There's nothing on this earth God cannot rescue you from. He does miracles every single day. Now, let's pray. Oh God, you are our rock, our anchor. And we thank you, Father, for being a solid place for us to land in the midst of whatever turmoil, tribu tribulation, or trials we are enduring right now, whether it's sickness, whether it's trouble, whatever it is, we can endure it because we have the hope of tomorrow. We have the hope of heaven, even if we're walking through loss. Father, those grieving the loss of a loved one, we have the hope, Father God, of seeing them again because you love us. You paid the ultimate sacrifice for us, and we receive it happily, Father God. No matter how much life tosses us around, you are the anchor that holds us, and we thank you for the hope we find in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Uh, cut my hair last night. Um, I should have done it sooner, but I was going through so many 
issues with styling. He was getting snarls and knots in the back underneath here. And finally it dawned on me, duh, you need a haircut. Cause as I was trying to get the knots out, hair would get ripped and pulled. And so my, I was just like, it's time. It's time. The last time I got a haircut was in September. So it's time. So now I'm just dealing and coping with, did I cut it too short? Okay. It is what it is. I had a wonderful weekend yesterday. Very relaxing. Came back from the DAR state conference in Williamsburg. It was so wonderful to see everyone. I was very thrilled that our, my chapter, the Princess Anne County chapter in district one of the Virginia daughters, um, we received so many prestigious first place state awards in so many different categories of service, serving the military, serving our veterans, uh, the different things that we are doing in the community. And it, it, it's such a blessing to know that we're having an impact in some way. That's the whole purpose of the DAR is to uh, promote the historic preservation, education, and honoring the military. God, home, and country is the motto. And I really love uh, being connected with an organization that is so service-oriented and honoring and valuing those things, uh, honoring the Constitution and all the different things. You'll hear me talk about it, but, you know. Anyway, I had a great day, and so it's a very, very busy week for me. And it's a short work week. I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then uh, it's it's going to be a great week. I love it. And take some time. This is the Holy Week. This is a week to reflect. And if you get an opportunity, usually on Thursdays, and I'll mention it again on Thursday, CBN has this wonderful um, depiction of the suffering of Christ through a sculptor. And I'll get more information. And if I find the link for that on their website, <clears throat> I will post it on Thursday's devotion. <clears throat> that sculptor, I can't think of his name right now. Um, he's gone home to be with Jesus, but his depiction in the storytelling is phenomenal. And it is tradition for me. I watched it every year for 21 years when I worked at CBN and I continue to watch it. It is a wonderful tradition on Monday, Thursday. So that's coming up on Thursday, but God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Monday and bye until next time.